Welcome back to the Age of Asparagus. Over the next two lessons, we are going to make some Bob Ross style mountains. Even if you've already watched his lesson, you should go back a second time and watch the part where he does this. That's a, between about 7.25 and 11.15 of the Mystic Mountain Show we've been following. I'll put a link to that specific section in the video description, and if I can figure it out, I'll add an annotation or a card to this video. Once Bobby has filled you with his mountain painting wisdom, come back and join me here. Alright, time to make some mountains. So, this is pretty cool. I have to admit, when I first figured this out, how to replicate what Bob Ross does using Krita, I probably wasted an hour or so just drawing mountains, because you can whip them up in less than two minutes. No lie, you'll see. But first, we need to create a couple new brushes. We're going to be working with the brush engine again. This time I'm going to go into a little bit more detail. Slowly we'll be becoming more familiar with that brush engine window throughout the course. We're going to start this time with a preset called the smudge block tilt. Now, this section here is getting pretty small. And scrolling through this, I don't want to lose my nice big overview. I want like access to my palette here. I have access to my brush presets on the pop-up and the rest of the brushes I have access from the toolbar here which is almost identical to the brush presets docker except you have a little bit more functionality. You can actually delete brushes. Be careful with that button there. So let's search here. It's called smudge block tilt so I'm going to just type in block tilt. Let's see what happens. Block tilt. I get nothing. How about just block? There we go. Smudge block tilt. That's going to be our starting brush. So I'm going to select it. Let's go to the brush engines window. And we can see here we have the smudge block tilt selected with all of its settings. It's a color smudge brush is the type of engine it uses. Let's see what it looks like in our preview window. It does nothing. Well, that's because it's a smudge brush and it doesn't actually use any color. My foreground color is black and yet it is not drawing in black. So the first thing we're going to need to change is we need to let this give this smudge brush some color. And how we do that in this color smudge engine is we go to this option down here, the color rate. Currently that is off. So if I just turn that on, we don't have to worry about these settings here yet, then I start getting some color. Recall from our previous brushes that this little dotted area here is what's going to become the icon for our preset. So if I want to reload the, the icon that came with the smudge block tilt, I can click that there. This is a nice icon, it's a palette knife. Let's put a foreground background gradient here. Before we get into changing any more of the brushes settings, I'm just going to give you a more in-depth overview of this window here. Along the top, you have all of the brush presets that you have installed of the Color Smudge Engine. So these are all Color Smudge brushes here. And there's the current one we have selected. We can select different brushes from here. This is a rake smudge brush. Again, there is no color rate, you can see here. So this is only smudging colors that already exist on the canvas. It's not actually adding color. Let's go back to our smudge block tilt, the brush we're going to use as a template to create our mountain palette, and take a look at some of these settings, just briefly. Starting at the top, we have the brush tip. So here are a whole bunch of sections on the left and each section has a ton of settings. I just noticed that when we were switching around brushes the color rate reverted back to off so let's turn that back on again. The brush tip is the shape of your brush when you click down. You can see here it's a rectangular shape and it is not completely dense it has some open areas which is you can't really see there but if I draw like this you can see some of these lines it's not fully solid. You can change the shape to almost anything. There, it's, it's a lot of fun playing around with these settings. We can change the size of the brush, that's pretty obvious. The ratio will change the width of the brush. So if I go all the way up to one, now I've got a square. 
And if I go right down to zero, I have nothing. Or really thin, if I want it. For our brush, we're going to use something like 0 0.06, so fairly thin, much thinner than the default right there, something like that. We're not going to worry about the fade setting here for our palette brush, but you can easily see the difference when I change the fade, the horizontal, is it has a smooth edge now. So it doesn't have as sharp an edge. You can completely see the difference there between them. But we're going to leave that for this brush. And this is basically the process of playing around with these settings. Many of them are very self-explanatory. Some of them, not so much. But just by playing with the settings, you can quickly find the effect you're looking for. One thing we might want to change, for example, is the angle. So the default angle of this brush is at 90 degrees, which is not occurring with my pen because my Intuos 5 Touch tablet has tilt and rotation sensitivity. So as I turn my pen, the brush is turning also. And that's this setting right here under rotation, which we'll get to in a moment. In fact, since most of you probably don't have a rotationally sensitive tablet, I'm going to turn that off. Even though this effect is much easier to achieve with rotation, I'm just going to turn that off for now. And we'll go back up to brush tip, so then you'll see what I see, hopefully. Okay, there we go. So now our brush is 90 degrees. If I change the angle, my brush will be fixed in a different position. If you don't have tilt sensitivity, then set your brush to about 135 degrees and I'll show you a way to kind of fake it. Anyway, we'll get a good mountain effect out of it without that. Okay, so that's a good start. Our mountain's going to be, some, you know, something like our mountain's going to be something like this anyway. We're getting there. These other settings, a lot of fun to play with. We don't need to worry about them for this. Shape, square, circle, turns it into a circle. And although this generated brush tip works for us, you can use textures as well. So, for example, if I want to switch over to some, let's just try this very top one here in the top left. What's textures at? There, my brush will turn into whatever texture I choose. Ooh, cool. Okay, let's go back to our brush. Be careful that if you click away anywhere, we'll lose the settings we've worked on because we haven't saved our preset yet. So let's do that. Let's rename this. I'm going to name this BR Palette Knife. And we want to give it a decent thumbnail. So before I save it, I'm going to give it that thumbnail. Save to presets. We're going to update this thumbnail afterwards. So the next thing I want to change in our brush is we don't actually get enough. Even if I press really hard, we're not getting enough color. So all I did here was turn on the color rate, but we didn't actually look at its settings. So let's select the color rate option here. And you can see the strength is down to 0.23, about 23%. So by increasing that, we should be able to get more color. Let's test it out. There it is now. Let's increase it to 50. Oh yeah, see we're getting darker. So let's crank her up to something like Let's just go up to 100. I think that'll be good. So I think the brush is still a bit light. Even if I press hard, I can't quite get it dark enough on these downstrokes here. So let's go to, let's check out the smudge length and let's increase the strength of that. Let's go up to like 75 or something. There we go, that's nicer. Let's use that. Okay, now we have a palette knife. Before we save these changes we made, Let's go load up the icon, and I'm just going to draw with our new settings here, so we have an idea. So the icon better represents this new brush that we have. And I'm going to hit overwrite preset. My preset appeared right here, I can see the new one, BR Palette Knife. Notice I have a few others here, these are ones I was practicing with, and I didn't want to delete. 
So we have our BR palette knife ready to go. Let's add it to our brushes. I'm going to click away and under the presets icon on the toolbar, let's do a search here for BR again and we should be able to pull up all of our brushes. BR palette knife. You can see there's two there similar to what we just created. Okay, my BR palette knife. I'm going to right click it and assign it to the Bob Ross tag. My other one, just going to delete that. And I made a snow one too. We're going to recreate that now. I'm going to delete that one. So on our pop-up now, we should have three. We got our palette knife. Unfortunately, the icon's a little cut off here, but I know what it is. And we'll soon enough be able to draw some mountains. So why don't we get started on that? Let's go to the layers and we'll create a new layer for our mountains. I'm going to click this button here, the plus, I got a new layer, double click the name and we'll call it mountains. Hit enter to fix it and I'm going to choose, make sure the color you have chosen is our mountain mixture, the almost black but kind of blue purple dark sienna alzarin crimson mix and we're going to try and draw a mountain here. So I didn't mention this before, but our brush size is 100 pixels, which is about one inch, and Bobby's using a one inch palette knife, so that should work out fine. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by going up on a slant like this, and then coming down on a jaggy other side of the mountain. Let's take a look at this. So I'm gonna come up, I'm putting a lot of pressure on this because I want a lot of color, and I'm gonna come down something like that. And actually I want more color, so I'm gonna come down again on top of it. And now I'm going to fill out some of this with color. The actual streaks here doesn't matter much because we're going to add that texture later with the snow. I just want to fill out some color. We're going to smudge this all in later. This is just the general outline shape. Okay, and now I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to go up a little bit and then I'm going to come down. Little jaggy edges there. We'll fill this out with some color. I'm going to slowly send that that way. Add some color here. Get over top of that blue, get a nice dark area over that blue. Okay, now we're going to go back to our smudge brush here, and we want this smaller to start up in these sharp areas, so I'm going to reduce the size to about, using the left square bracket, down to about 100. So this has been happening to me before, and when I switch the size of this brush, for some reason, it is not smudging properly. So if I switch back to this brush, let's try that again. Let's reduce the size to 100 and try it. There we go, now it's working properly. Don't know, that happened to me every time. So just switching out and switching back in seems to, seems to have no problem. So I'm just smoothing out some stuff up here. It doesn't matter too much. Now, one thing you want to avoid is actually smudging along the edge. We want to keep that nice sharp edge if you can and some of that detail. If you have anything anywhere that's not solid color, that's fine. You might want to just brush it out a bit. I added a lot more color here than I normally did, a lot more black with this brush. That's fine. Let's go back to our full two inch one and we're gonna we're gonna just smooth light small light strokes here. You can really drag out that black if you press too hard and too long. So just smooth out the bottom there. Bobby's pretty excited about this wonderful pollution here that gives you the blurry bottom of the mountain. Most of this is going to be covered by other stuff in the scenery, so it's not too big of a deal. Just get that out there. Good, okay, so we got an outline of a mountain. Next up, we're going to add some snow, and this is where the mountain starts looking cool. Thanks for joining me, and I hope to see you back for the next show.